Hello, everybody. Howdy. Together again. Yeah, the dynamic duo, huh? It's been a while. Oh, my goodness. Um, before we get into what we have here, I want to share something from a little road trip we took last week to Albuquerque to go um, celebrate James's birthday. What caught our attention was a billboard, a rather large billboard that said, Jesus didn't like religion either. I agree with that. I agree. Religion is not the answer to our problems. And coming from a religious background, Jehovah's Witnesses, Watchtower, Jehovah's Witnesses make you believe that their religion is the answer. Well, all religions do that. They all do that. Exactly. Yeah. They're the only true one from God. They all do that. Yes, but what they don't realize is what you have is a bunch of fish eating fish. Fish eating fish? Fish eating fish. I'll define that later. Maybe not in this video, but in another one. But the problem is, is that unless you really, really take the time to do some research, you will never ever understand how some men can use the Bible to absolutely control your life. For I instance, watched her. yeah, for instance, every Jehovah Witness out there can quote 1 Corinthians 15:33. Oh, it was crammed down our throats constantly. They were constantly hammering us with yeah. that one. What? Do you not know that bad associations spoil useful habits? The Watchtower Society and Jehovah's Witnesses and a lot of religions will tell you that the Apostle Paul, under divine inspiration, penned those words. Now, we've done... Although it is good advice. It is. It's like one rotten apple will spoil the whole bushel. Yeah. It's good advice. It's sound reasoning. It's logical. And I think you were just going to say that we actually did a video about that years ago. Yeah. From my archaeological study Bible, 1 Corinthians 15.33. This quotation is from the Greek comedy Theus, written by the familiar Greek poet Meander. Oh, you mean a Greek play inspired Paul to write these words? And man's religion assigned it as coming from the inspiration of God? Unless you do your research and figure these things out, there will always be a man using the Bible to control your life and perhaps bring it to ruin. So what brings this on is I got an email, and Neil, I'm sorry we haven't had a chance to do this before. Now, you know I'm a little behind on my emails. Um, he sent us an email, and he says, I was just wondering if you could answer a question for me, and it is no surprise that it is about the JW New World Translation. <laughs> I was doing some study of my King James Bible and watching a video and the teacher was talking about Colossians 2.18 and in my Bible it says, and I'm just going to read it directly, it says the same thing in here. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility and worshiping of angels intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. And he made a casual remark that the JW, New World Translation, says the thing. Well, I'll just read it. Colossians 2.18 Let no man deprive you of the prize who takes delight in a false humility in a form of worship of the angels, taking his stand on the things he has seen. He is actually puffed up without proper cause by his fleshly frame of mind. So then Neil says, so I went to JW.org and clicked on the study Bible, and when I clicked on the asterisk, the footnote read, quoted from pagan 
Mystery <laughs> Initiation <laughs> Rites. Okay, so maybe he was inspired by God, you know, to quote from that. I don't know. But Neil says, <laughs> Are you I... serious? Are you serious? Good Lord. So Neil says, I am perplexed by this. Does this mean that JWs are into pagan mysteries and are presenting it as the Word of God, or does it mean something else? And boy, Neil, does this open a whole bunch of rabbit holes and research. And I was doing a lot of research. Now, you can go to Bible Study Tools or Bible Hub. They all have commentaries. And you can get tons of things on from these commentaries of what they thought this meant. We're probably not going to be able to answer your question, but you know we do have some questions that might get you on the right trail to do some research on this. Because it appears from some of the commentaries that Greek philosophies and legends and stuff like that were getting written into some of these Bible books. Gnosticism. Gnosticism. What a lot of you don't realize is that <clears throat> the Hellenization period, when the Greeks were the world powers, and they took those Hebrew texts and wrote everything into Greek, a lot of that Greek philosophy infiltrated. I mean, and it even filtered down into Jesus' day because it wasn't Jesus talking about death and Hades or maybe it's the book of Revelation. Where it says death and Hades are going to be done away with. And I always wondered, you know, why is it death and Hades if, you know, like Watchtower says, it's the same thing. Well, what Watchtower says is that the Hebrew word Sheol is the grave and Hades is the Greek word for, for the grave. No, it's not. Hades is the name of the Greek god that controls the underworld. So when it says death and Hades, it means that death would be done away with and Hades, the god of the underworld. The Greek god. So these are things that you need to study and research and get a really good grasp and understanding because all of those ancient mystery cults are pro prolific throughout the Judeo-Christian Bible. See, and even in the Bible itself, um, several scriptures, and I can think of one in Revelation, where it talked about these different sects of Christians. Yes. You know, there was the sect of Nicholas, and all these different beliefs. You know, some were Gnostics, and some were hanging on to the Greek philosophy. So, I mean, this is a huge amount of research, and a huge rabbit hole. Um, I found a commentary, uh, let's see, this is the commentary critical and explanatory on the whole Bible about Colossians 2.18. And it even mentions that um, there was many years that they had this worship of angels. And even uh, the Greeks, this is even the modern Greeks have a legend that Michael, Michael the Archangel, opened a chasm to draw off an inundation threatening the Colossian Christians. <laughs> so, you know, is this all part of this worship of angels? Did they worship Michael the Archangel? Which brought to my mind, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that Michael the Archangel is actually Jesus Christ. So do the Seventh-day Adventists. Yeah. So, you know... Is that a worship of angels then? See, and then you have to really go back and study the whole, the whole idea of where angels come from and when it really started coming into the human psyche. And when you do your study and research, you'll see most of it comes out of ancient Babylon where the you know, Israelites were captive for many, many years. So they were indoctrinating themselves with this Babylonian philosophy. Now, Neil, I probably can't answer your question, but just something for you to think about when you ask about the contradictory, you know, is it contradicting itself? So I have my reference Bible here. Now, going back to the second chapter of Colossians, just look at verse 16. Okay, now we just read in 18 where let no man deprive you 
of the prize, who takes delight in a mock humility, basically getting you to pagan worship and idolatry worship and angel worship, okay? So don't let them rob you of your prize trying to talk you or seduce you into the, the pagan worship. Angel worship, and exactly. angel worship. But look at what verse 16 says. Therefore, let no man judge you in eating and drinking or in respect of a festival or of an observance of the new moon or of a Sabbath. Well, these ancient <laughs> pagan initiation rites and a lot of these pagan cult um, festivals and observances were of the new moon. So why would he even say, let no man judge you about observing this new moon? And then turn around and say, well, you know, don't let, what's he say, don't uh, let no man deprive you of the prize who takes delight in a mock humility in a form of worship of the angels. Well, the thing is, is in, in this whole philosophy, if you don't worship the one true God, then you're worshiping demons. And aren't demons, you know, supposedly, you know, fallen angels? I mean, it's, it just, there's no simple answer to this particular scripture because it really looks like it contradicts itself. But at the same time, you have to understand what was happening and why a lot of scholars don't believe Paul wrote this. Oh, and yes, this reference Bible does have a footnote that says, quoted from the initiation rites of pagan mysteries. Exactly. So it's even in this Bible. So reading from this book here regarding Colossians, just going to read two points here, the purpose and organization, because you have to realize that if you're going to be a follower of Christ, you have to believe these exact set of words. You can't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, or you can't believe that Jesus is God himself. See, you've got two different conflicting, well, mystery schools of thought. But religions do that. They believe their beliefs and doctrines are the one true religion and everybody else is wrong. Well, Every that, single one of them do that. That's why you get fish eating fish. Yeah, we've been seeing a lot of that lately, haven't we? Yes. Okay, so reading from the source, it says, The author's purpose is to make sure that the Colossians clearly recognize who Christ really is. He emphasizes two principal themes. Christ is supreme because God's power now manifested in him was the same power that created the entire universe, including those invisible entities the false teachers mistakenly worship, referring to angel worship. And when they realize Christ's supremacy and experience his indwelling spirit, the Colossians are initiated into his mystery cult, voluntarily harmonizing their lives with the cosmic unity he embodies. So there again, suggesting another mystery cult. You gotta accept Jesus into your heart. It's another mystery cult. The mystery becomes, and well, if you accept Jesus in your heart, is he, you know, the son of God, like Watchtower explains it? Or is he a triune God, like the rest of Christianity explains it? That, that's a mystery to for the ages. Or like we mentioned in a video, you know, a couple of years ago, like the Seventh-day Adventists, it would actually be four, not a trinity, because there's God the Father, the Holy Spirit, Jesus, the Son, and then Michael the Archangel. So you've got four. It's not really a trinity. Right. So the, the whole problem comes down to is that unless you do your research, and I mean in-depth research, there will always be somebody looking to use this book to absolutely control your life, your mind, oh, and by extension, your wallet. Yeah, 
Exactly. See, Jesus didn't like religion either because that's what religion does. It destroys a man because it controls their lives. Well, look at, he told the Pharisees, they made the word of God invalid because of their traditions. Exactly. And that's why he didn't like religion. That's right. And that's why we don't like religion. <laughs> that's right. And um, before we sign off, I just want to thank everybody so much for all of the wonderful phone calls. And, I mean, my goodness, it's been overwhelming, hasn't it? Yes. I mean, A lot we, of cold meals. <laughs> yeah, my goodness. Last weekend, our phone kept going dead because we were on the phone so much. We'd have one, we have two, you know, phones, and we'd have one in the base charging. And by the time the one we're on was dead, we'd have to go get the other one and charge that up. And then yes. it was just constant weekend. But thank you guys so much for your love and concern. We're doing much better. And um, like I said the other day in my video, after all the hard work we've done, we just can't walk away and just abandon everybody. So, you know, we're, keep plugging along, keep doing videos. And uh, you guys can keep sending questions. We may not be able to answer them, but maybe we can bring up some questions that will help you, you know, to go research this stuff on your own. And there again, a lot of these things, with the proper research, understanding what's going on, you can answer your own questions. Yeah. You, you really can. You, but you just have to be willing to look in places that mainstream religions don't want you looking and you'll probably find your answers right there yeah exactly like uh, we just watched a documentary on the Dead Sea Scrolls and it I mean it was really fascinating because they have this new camera and they're retaking pictures of these fragments of the Dead Sea Scrolls and all of these pieces and I mean there's thousands and thousands of them even ones uh, with this new camera they have a filter <coughs> and they're doing different light spectrums even pages that are completely black that they thought they couldn't see any of the writing for all these decades they're now taking pictures and they can actually read it now and what they were saying is some of these Bible books there's some mistranslated words uh, some of these fragments are ancient ancient Hebrew original Hebrew writings from like I think they said 2 BCE so this is ancient Hebrew writings and there was some mistranslations but uh, we'll see what becomes of that we'll see if we can do some research on that later and guess what it had to do with Noah's Ark that's right. <laughs> so, another <laughs> rabbit hole to investigate. But it's fun. It's fun. So, we hope you have a wonderful week, everyone. And you know we love you all. Bye. Bye.